Aaron Burnett out front. Weeknights at 7, only on CNN. On the eve of Iran's presidential elections, candidate Hassan Rouhani tweets, he's ahead in the polls. Rival Saeed Jalili tweets a link to a young rapper's campaign rhyme. It is one of Iran's many head-scratching contradictions that in a country where the regime blocks social media sites, most of Iran's presidential candidates have Twitter accounts. The irony is that these candidates who have taken to using social media, Twitter and Facebook, um, are hamstrung by the policies of the Iranian government. They have very few followers, actually, in the hundreds, uh, precisely because it's very difficult for people in Iran to access social media. Iran banned most social media soon after the 2009 elections, when sites like Twitter and YouTube fueled an anti-regime uprising. When the government barred reporters from covering the protests, Iranians used social media to expose the regime's brutal crackdown. A graphic YouTube clip of the dying moments of Neda Sultan, a 26-year-old allegedly shot by authorities, made much of the world stop and pay attention to Iran. Authorities eventually crushed the opposition movement and clamped down on Internet access. Today, Iran's cyber police restrict the free flow of information by slowing internet speeds and blocking thousands of websites and blogs. This week, as elections approached, Iranians said internet speed slowed to a crawl. Google said an Iranian spy campaign targeted Gmail users. The outcome has been a chilling effect on political discourse and debate online. They're really trying to make it clear to the population that um, don't even try a repeat of the 2009 protests. Um, this is, it's a highly securitized atmosphere. Even so, Iranians have more access to the Internet than any other country in the Middle East. Despite aggressive regime controls, tech-savvy Iranians are still finding ways to Facebook and tweets, even the presidential candidates themselves. Reza, just so you know, so amazing that some of the contradictions that, that you point out there in that piece. You know, I just was smiling because uh, you know some people today were saying, "Oh, well, the joke here in Iran is, you know, you call it the World Wide Web, we call it the World Wide Wait." Um, when you were talking about how slow the internet is, um, but it does look like the government's determined to restrict internet access. So, how are Iranians managing to get online, you know, in, in such big numbers, and do so without the government being able to, you know, identify them and, and punish them? when you're young tech savvy and you're tired of the government messing with your internet you're gonna find a way half of Iran's population is under 35 they're sharp educated you probably met a lot of them this week and what they've done is use VPNs virtual private networks to get around cyber blocks to get online but the problem is the government has hit back they found ways to block those VPNs and now they're working on a national internet. This is an internet that if it works and it's ready, it's gonna only be, uh, offer Iranians Iranian websites. No more Google, no more Yahoo, but it's very unlikely that Iranians are, are gonna stop efforts to use sophisticated ways to get online, Aaron.